Today, we're gonna generate random values for our particles. Let's go. All right, so we're currently in the middle of a series of videos with the goal of building a particle system in a shader. So far, we started with this stack of planes. And then last week, I showed you how to create this material function in Unreal and also an equivalent subgraph in Unity to make the planes face the camera like this. I'll put a link to the playlist for the whole series down in the description. If you haven't seen the first two videos in this series yet, go back and watch those first so you can get caught up. All right, so one of the fundamental properties of a particle system is that each particle has its own unique random values. These values are used to control all kinds of things like movement, rotation, and scale of the particles, and a lot more. The random values allow each particle to behave in a unique way, independent from all the others. So let's get started. To begin with, we need to pick our root node here and we're gonna switch our shading model from default lit to unlit. We may play around with particle lighting later on in the series, but for now we're just gonna simplify things by setting our root to unlit. And that basically gives us two inputs over here. We have emissive color and world position. And so if we wanna uh, continue what we were doing before, we need to take our vertex color here and plug it into emissive color instead. And just so it's a little bit more clear what's going on, we're gonna disconnect our billboards node for, for now um, so that we can see the random values that are getting generated for each particle. All right, to generate our random noise values, we're gonna use a type of noise called cell noise. And cell noise is, um, one of the options of the vector noise node. So let's add a vector noise node here. And you can see it defaults to being set to cell noise over here. There are a bunch of different options, Perlin, Gradient, Curl, Voronoi, but we're gonna keep it on cell. Basically what this type of noise does is when you pass it in a vector three value or a vector two value actually, it's gonna perform a hash on that value and spit out a random number uh, that's the same random number for the same input value, which means it's deterministic. So let's try this out. Let's pass the red channel of our vertex color into our vector noise cell noise here and just take a look at what we get. All right, so what you can see here is that all of our planes are generating the same random color. And why is that? Well, the vector noise node uh, is set up, uh, when it creates this cell noise, it's set up to use integers. And all of the values that we're passing it are somewhere between zero and one. You can see we're going from black to white here. Each of our planes is between zero and one right now. So uh, we're giving it floating point data and what it wants is integers. And so what we need to do in order to get um, good random values out of this is to convert our vertex color values here to integers. And when we created these vertex colors in our mesh, uh, I think I made this mesh in 3ds Max, uh, but you could make it in Maya or Blender or whatever 3D software you wanted. When I assigned these vertex colors, um, vertex colors have to be assigned in a value of zero to 255. And so it's basically uh, they're, they're already integer values, but they've been converted to floats. And so we need to take uh, this gradient value here and convert it back to integers. And the way that we do that is we just multiply it by 255. So where it used to be zero here, uh, it's still gonna be zero. And where it's one here, now it's gonna be 255. And each of the values in between is gonna be an integer. So it starts at zero, one, two, et cetera, all the way up to 255. All right, so we're gonna plug this in. So now that we've got these integers here and let's see what we get now. Okay, so now you can see um, our planes do have, each individual plane has its own unique random value, um, but there's also this sizzly noise here. And this is happening between, uh, because of floating point error. Um, so each of these um, 
integer values is getting a slightly different value um, than the others and so we end up with this kind of sizzly noise. So in order to take care of that, all we need to do is add a value of 0 0.5 and this will make all of our values align with each other and then they'll get rounded to the nearest whole number in our vector noise. All right, so we've converted to integers um, by multiplying by 255. We added 0 0.5 to get rid of our floating point error. And then we pass these values into our vector noise. And now you can see that each individual particle has its own, uh, its own set of random values. Now, these look like colors, but we're not going to be using them for colors. We're gonna use this as a set of three unique random values. So if I add a split components node here, you can see I have a red, a green, and a blue. And if I plug these in, you can see that each of these particles has a different random value for the red, the green, and the blue. So we have basically three unique random values coming out of our vector noise node. We're gonna use these to uh, control the way the particles move, uh, control the way they rotate, control the way um, a bunch of different behaviors we're going to be able to control with this random noise. Now one thing that you might be wondering is why did you go through all of this trouble to generate random noise in the shader when you could have just given a random value to each of the planes when you created the mesh? Or in other words, why didn't you just, uh, instead of creating a grayscale value in the vertex colors like this, why didn't you just give each plane a random value to begin with? And that's a good question. Um, the reason that we're doing that is because eventually, once we are calculating our particle's lifetime, we're actually going to alter this grayscale value for the particles for every lifetime. So when a particle uh, runs its lifetime and then respawns, we're gonna add a small incremental value to this grayscale value so that each lifetime of the particle, that particle will generate a different random value. And the reason that we're doing that is so that the particles, instead of repeating the same pattern over and over every time the particles are spawned, uh, the particles will uh, perform a different behavior in each of their lifetimes. And I think this will become a little bit more clear once we get a little bit farther into it. Um, but for now, uh, we're gonna leave it there. So today we created these random values for our particle system. And this is what we're gonna use kind of as a foundation together with our billboards um, to, to go from here and generate the rest of the behavior of the particles uh, in future episodes. All right, cool. I know that this may be a little bit dry and it's not super exciting to begin with, but these are absolutely essential uh, principles to establish to be able to create our particle systems. All right, let's switch over to Unity and I'll show you how to create these random values there as well. All right, here we are in Unity. And last week we created this really cool billboard node that takes our particles and makes them face the camera. So you can see in our preview here, all of our particles are facing the camera. So we're gonna take this and disconnect it for now, just so that we can get uh, a better view of our particle stack. So now that our billboard node is disconnected, you can see we've got our particle stack here. They're no longer facing the camera. And since we have our vertex color plugged into our base color and our emission, you can see the, the vertex colors uh, going from black to white here. So we're gonna go ahead and create random values on our particles in Unity as well. Um, but before we do that, I want to open up our graph inspector here and under graph settings, we're gonna take our material here and instead of lit, we're gonna set this to unlit um, because for now we're not gonna be dealing with um, particle lighting. And I just want to uh, get rid of all of the extra stuff here so it's not a distraction. So we need to take our vertex color and convert it to a random 
particle values. And in Unreal, when we did that, we used the cell noise node or the, uh, the vector noise node set to the cell node type. And we were able to create random values. But in Unity, we don't have a node that does that. And so what I'm gonna do is show you how to create one. It's gonna take in a value and run a hash function on it and give us a random value as a result. Now, I have done uh, a couple of different times on my channel, I've shown various methods of generating a hash value, but today I'm gonna show you like the ultimate method. Um, the, the methods that I've showed you before uh, generally relied on running a sign function and a lot of times when you pass that kind of a hash function, a really high value, uh, it would break down and we'd end up with repetitive patterns. Um, but I'm gonna show you a, a really fancy hash function today um, that will allow you to not get any repetition, give it really, really high values, and you'll always get really nice, uh, really deterministic results. All right, so we're gonna come down here and I'm gonna create a new subgraph. So I'll pick shader graph, subgraph, and we'll call this hash33 because we're putting in a vector three value and getting out a vector three value. And the first thing that I need to do is create the inputs and the outputs. So our input, we're just gonna call it P and it's gonna be a vector three value. Or actually I'm gonna call it in And for our output over here, I'm just gonna call this out and it's going to be a vector three as well. So we're passing in a vector three value and we're getting out a vector three value. All right, now we need to create a custom code node because we're gonna actually be writing this in code. So here is our custom function. And right now our custom function has no inputs or outputs. So we need to come over here to our node inspector. And for an input, again, we're gonna make this a vector three and set it to P. And for the output, we're gonna make that a vector three as well. And we're gonna call it out. And for the type, you can give uh, the custom function node a file that has code in it. But instead, I'm just gonna be using a string. And I'm gonna give this function a name. Again, we're gonna call it hash33. And now it's time to create our code. So the first thing that we need to do is, well, let's connect up our input value and our output value here. And I think what I'll just, what I'll do is go ahead and copy and paste this code in here. And then I'll kind of walk through what's happening. All right, so here's our code. You can see we're bringing in our P input value and we're rounding it to the nearest whole number and then we're converting it to an integer. And now this, where, <laughs> this is where stuff starts to get crazy. We're using operators here that are bitwise operator to operators to scramble around the bits of our data. Uh, you, can, you, you can see we're doing a couple of operations here that are simple. We're doing addition and multiplication. But then there are some other operators here that may be unfamiliar to you. These are bitwise operators and we're basically scrambling around the bits of our floating point data um, to get a random number. Uh, I'm not gonna go through and explain all of this in detail. Um, basically this hash function uh, was developed by a friend of mine named Chris Chu and he's an amazing graphics engineer. Um, this isn't something that I developed, uh, but this math formula here will take in our vector three data and give us uh, a random vector three as a result. It's pretty cool. I will go ahead and paste this down in the description uh, so that you can use it. Again, this is a function that is deterministic. It can use really high values and it works great. Uh, so that's what we're gonna use today for our hash three three function. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save this and we'll switch back to our particle system and we'll go ahead and add our hash33 function that we just created 
into our particle system. Right now we have uh, our vertex colors here in a gradient from black to white. And let's go ahead and plug our vertex colors into our hash 33 and just take a look at what we get. All right, so you can see that we're getting a little bit of random value here, but uh, what we really want is for each plane to be different. And the reason they're not different right now is because we're just using a range of zero to one. And our hash function is expecting our values to be a little bit larger. It, it needs integer values. And so in order to convert these to integers, we can just take our vertex color value here and multiply it by 255. So right now it's in a range of zero to one, but if we multiply it by 255, now it's in a range of zero to 255 where each of these values is its own integer. So let's go ahead and pass this into our hash function. Yeah, so now you can see that we're getting nice random values generated for each of our planes. And these are the values that we're gonna be using for creating unique uh, positions, rotations, scales, basically all of the behaviors for our particles. Um, we're gonna be able to make the particles look unique because each of them has a different set of three random values. Now this may look like color um, because we have an R, a G, and a B, red, green, and blue values, but um, they're actually three separate and independent unique random values um, that we can use. And just like we talked about in the uh, Unreal section, you might be wondering, well, why didn't you just create a mesh that has these random values baked into the vertex colors instead of going through all this trouble to generate them in the shader? And the reason for that is each time the particle goes through its lifetime, so, so what's gonna happen is the particle is going to spawn, it's going to go through its lifetime, and then it's gonna die, and then it's gonna be used again, it's gonna respawn. And every time it respawns, we're gonna need to give it a different random value. If we were to just bake these random values into the vertex colors, they'd be static random values. But instead, what we're gonna do is each time uh, the particle respawns, we're going to increment uh, this grayscale value that we have here. It'll get a different random value so that each lifetime it can have different and unique behavior. If we didn't do that, um, the particles would basically behave the same and we just get a looping pattern of the same behavior over and over. We want to do it a little bit better than that. Hopefully all of this will become a little bit more clear once we get a little bit farther into the shader. Um, but for today, we're just going to stick with uh, what we've learned so far on uh, generating random values per plane. All right, next week, we're gonna take these random values and I'm gonna show you how to create position offsets for each of the particles uh, using these random values. And this position offset is gonna be uh, a value that we use to control the size of the particle emitter. All right, we're making great progress on our particle system. We started out with our mesh. We created uh, the billboard node here to make the particles all face the camera. And then we created uh, random values for each of our particles. And next week we're gonna offset each of the particles so we start giving them uh, some unique positions. So I hope you come back next week for that. And in the meantime, have a great week, everybody. Thanks for watching.